Hello everyone! Lifeboats are very important boats because they are life-saving boats. They rescue people who are in trouble out at sea. Here come the crew now to get ready for launch. These crew members are real-life superheroes who give up their free time to save people who are in trouble at sea. Today they're doing a training exercise. Look at the lifeboat coming out of the station now! The tractor is pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Those caterpillar tracks are perfect for travelling along the sandy, muddy beach. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today, which can travel on land and sea by floating around on a cushion of air. These huge fans on the back are what pushes the hovercraft along. And it's very, very noisy! Here comes the lifeboat and the tractor. The tractor can go deep into the water to launch the lifeboat smoothly into the sea. The trailer tilts and the boat just slides off. Here we go! We're out at sea! This Shannon class lifeboat can go really fast so that they can get to people in trouble as quickly as possible. This is Andy. He's the coxswain, which means he's in charge of the lifeboat today. And this is Matt, the deputy coxswain and driver of the boat. What are you doing now, Andy? Now we're going to do a man overboard exercise. What will happen is one of our guys will go in the water now, and then we'll pick them up. This brave member of the crew has volunteered to get in the cold water so that the rest of the crew can practice how to pull somebody out again. Yeah. They use a special harness and ropes to pull him out as quickly and safely as possible. Just look at how the crew all work together as a team to rescue him. Do you want to have a look inside the lifeboat? Come on, Andy's going to give us a quick tour. So the first seat we come to is a crew seat or a doctor's seat. So if we have to take a doctor out, the, do the doctor would sit there. Then we've got Alistair sitting here. He's the navigator today, so he's keeping us safe and in deep water. As we come further back, we've got the coxswain seat. So the coxswain sits in the middle of the boat and he's able to look at everything that's going on around the boat. Alongside the coxswain we have the mechanic seat. He's looking after the engines and he has all the controls he needs for, uh, for operating anything we need during the journey out to rescue someone. We've got the radar seat. The radar is a, is a great piece of equipment. The radar will see in the dark or it'll see through fog when, uh, when we can't see anything. And then we have the helmsman's seat. This is where the, the lifeboat's driven from. At the minute, there's no one sitting in here because the lifeboat's getting driven from uh, on deck. Thanks for the tour, Andy. The tractor's waiting for us on the beach, ready to tow the boat back up to the station. Well, uh, Matt, we're about to hit the beach. You better slow down. Uh, Matt. Ah! Oh, ah, we're okay. Ah, I see, that was supposed to happen. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. Now the tractor can come along and tow the boat up and onto the trailer. As well as the crew on the boat, there is also a shore crew who make sure that the launch and recovery go smoothly. Wow, that's like magic. The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. A 
long day at sea, now it's time to head back. But the lifeboat's all dirty, and the tractor and tracks. So the crew at the station all wash, scrub and clean. They really look after their rescue machine. It's very important to look after the boat, so that she works for a long, long time. Now let's go for a ride on a real steam train. I love steam trains. I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines. Woohoo! This train is just leaving the station now. Look at all that steam coming out. It's no wonder they're called steam trains. Come on, let's get on board. We're all very clean and comfortable in here. But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front. The part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive. And it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian, please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. We put it in the fire there. We burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, just like boiling your kettle at home, it makes the steam come out the top but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam loco and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire, and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank. Because this is what gets turned into steam, which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty! Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that and then this is the brake and this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards and that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. The 
Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after, which is why the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners and painters. This place is a hive of activity. In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Do you want to see a monster truck crushing cars? Let's meet Swamp Thing. Hello everyone. I'm here at Truck Fest to meet a really big machine. A monster truck. Wow! Look at the size of the wheels on that thing. One of my best friends is a monster truck and he'd really like to meet Big Red over here. Come along, Max. Come and say hello to Big Red. Who do you think is bigger? Max or Big Red? Big Red's only built for taking passengers on a ride on his back. Look how much fun that looks! But I'm here to meet a stunt monster truck. A monster truck that crushes and jumps cars! This is Swamp Thing. A huge monster truck that weighs as much as two elephants. Swamp Thing is 14 feet tall. That's almost as tall as a giraffe. Let's take a look at Swamp Thing in action. Three, two, one, go! Wow, just look at those cars getting crushed! The monster truck is so heavy that when it lands on the cars, they are squashed as flat as a pancake. Swamp Thing is a really amazing monster machine. I wonder what it's like to drive a monster truck. This is Swamp Thing's driver, Tony. He's using his tools to perform a safety check on Swamp Thing. He's checking that all the nuts and bolts are tight so that a wheel doesn't fall off in the middle of a show. Tony, what's it like to drive a monster truck? To drive a monster truck, for me, it's the best job in the world. I saw it on TV when I was about eight years old and I never thought I'd be doing it for a living. Um, the feel you get in there, it's so noisy, so bumpy but the adrenaline keeps you going. How do you get in Swamp Thing? Most people think you climb on the tyres, but I'll show you how you get in. It's fairly simple. Just walk around the side of it. Doors don't open. What you got is a climbing frame, and literally, you just climb up on the inside. And then you're straight in the seat. OK, how do you drive the monster truck? Literally, we've got one pedal for go, and one pedal for stop. That's the starting and stopping. Now we've got to work out how to steer it. Front wheels is just like a car, turns in a steering wheel. Unlike a normal car, we've got back steering, so this turns on a joystick, left and right on the back. So who's ready to crush some cars? Tony built this monster truck himself, using lots of different parts, from lorries and diggers. He knows it inside out. When Tony takes Swamp Thing around the country, he can't take it on the roads. So the monster machine has to travel in Tony's massive lorry. Swamp Thing has many of the things that a normal car would have, 
only they're much, much bigger. There's the wheels, the engine, the exhaust, the suspension, which gives Tony a softer landing, the brakes, the chassis, and the cabin. All of these things are designed so that Swamp Thing can jump, like this. Do you fancy an ice cream? Let's visit a real ice cream truck. This is Mr T and he drives his ice cream van all over the place to serve lucky people delicious ice cream. But it's not an ice cream van without music. So Gecko, when we're nearly there where we need to go, this is what we do to put the music on to let everybody know that we are nearly here. When Mr T arrives, he can move into the back of the van and serve beautiful ice cream straight away. Hi Gecko! Hello Mr T! So welcome to my van Gecko! This is all the lovely treats that we put on the ice creams. We've got lots of different sweets. Look at these lovely snakes. From the back of this wonderful van, Mr T can create some amazing things. Slushies, hot waffles, and of course, ice creams. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we make our magic ice cream. Get out a gallon of famous ice cream, Take the top off and then we pour it into the hopper. Ice cream is made from milk, cream, eggs and sugar. Mr T's special ice cream machine is like a super fast freezer and the liquids poured into the machine are frozen in just one minute. When things are frozen, they become harder and colder than they were before. Mr. T is more than just an ordinary ice cream man. He's always thinking of new ice cream ideas. So as well as making ice cream cones, he makes ice cream trays for people to share with lots of sweeties, sauces and treats on top. There's nothing that puts a smile on people's faces like a lovely ice cream from Mr. T. Everyone loves ice cream vans, grown-ups, children, and even pirates love ice cream. Wow, this all looks delicious. Ice cream and sweeties are a treat. So remember, don't ask your mummy or daddy to have them every day. What's your favourite flavour ice cream, Mr T? And my favourite ice cream is the Bubblicious Bubblegum Tray with lots of pink and blue bottles and of course the lovely Hubba Bubba Bubblies. Mr T served lots of happy customers today. But is there one person who hasn't had an ice cream yet, Mr T? So here we are in Gecko. This one's just for you. A new creation, Gecko's Gooey Green Ice Cream. Ah, oh, thank you, Mr T. So what do you think about that then, Gecko? Did you enjoy them ice creams? It was absolutely delicious, thank you. Here's two for your friends, the Mechanicals. Next, I meet a real ambulance. I'm spending the day with a real ambulance today. We're going to be having a look inside, then going out on the road with the ambulance crew and visiting a special garage just for ambulances. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. 
they're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine. Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button. The ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch so that Paul Terry and Terry can amazing. talk to each other. Okay. Yeah, it'll stay really nice. Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. When a call comes in, it's time for Paul and nine, Terry nine, 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 to turn nine, the nine, lights nine. on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard, with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the mechanic to fix the problem. There, that's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? After traveling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty. So this is where they're given a good wash. Blue mechanical, you better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh. Too late! Who wants to see some amazing roller coasters in action next? I'm here today at Alton Towers Resort. I'm going to have a ride on some amazing roller coasters and learn all about how they work. Roller coasters are designed for one thing. Fun! No two are the same. They can do loops, twists, spins, and can go really, really fast. But how do these amazing roller coasters work? Let's take a closer look. Roller coasters run on tracks like trains, but there's lots of differences too. Trains only have one set of wheels that rest on top of the track. But these cars have three sets of wheels. One on the top, one on the side, and one underneath to grip the track. This means that the roller coaster can do things that trains can't, like going upside down while still staying on the track. But the main difference between trains and roller coasters is how they are powered. Power is what makes everything start just like batteries in a toy helps them turn on. 
A roller coaster car doesn't have an engine for power, so to get the car moving fast along the track, it first needs to be pulled to the top of a very big hill. On this ride called Nemesis, a long chain pulls the car all the way to the top. The car is then released and gravity brings it down the track at whizzing speeds. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls all things down towards the Earth. It's like sliding down a slide. Gravity pulls you downwards. Woohoo! This ride, Oblivion, works in the same way. The chains slowly pull the car up to the top, which makes the people on the ride very nervous. Wow! Look how high that is! This ride is a straight drop which means there is only one way down. Scary! Some rides don't get pulled up a big hill, but instead are connected to a really long metal rope. When everyone's ready, it's time for launch. The powerful rope is reeled in and pulls really hard on the car. Ready, steady! Go, go, go! The rope has launched the car along the track like a huge slingshot. This ride's called Rita, and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. That's as fast as a racing car. When this ride needs to slow down, powerful magnets rise up and use magnetic force to slow down the car. A final set of brakes hold the train in place, bringing the ride to a stop. With all these twists, turns and loops, roller coasters have to be really safe. So all the people who work at Alton Towers work hard to make sure everyone on the ride is secure by loading them onto the ride carefully and checking their seat belts. Clever computers triple check the safety of all passengers too. But roller coasters don't just carry people. At this roller coaster restaurant, it's food and drinks that ride the roller coasters. When the food is ready, they're sent down the track straight to your table. Yum yum! Let's visit a giant truck wash now. Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away, loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle.
There's three rollers in total. Two that clean each side of the truck. And one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away. And the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Do you love helicopters? There's one coming right up! Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly! On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start! Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa! I can hardly stay on my feet! Red Mechanical! Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills 
using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilots skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done, team! Back at base, the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 search and rescue helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera, which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself, and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely. And the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here, down through the ramp itself, off the aircraft, into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay, this is the cockpit of the helicopter. There are two pilots. One sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side. These are the controls to fly the helicopter. This one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down. And then there's two pedals down on the floor as well. And that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens. And then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Our next real vehicle is a recycling truck. There's so much happening here at the recycling depot, with trucks coming and going. Just look at how the little forklift trucks zoom around, taking the rubbish out of the sides of the trucks and tipping them into their own special places. But our story begins at home. Have you ever wondered what happens to the rubbish you put in your bins? Recycling trucks have special days when they come past your house to collect all of the rubbish. Recycling is a way of separating different types of rubbish that you throw out, so that it can be used again and again. This all starts at home, so it's up to all of us to separate plastics, paper, cans and food waste into their different bins to get them ready for collection. Here comes the truck now. It's purple. I love purple. This is Simon and Daniel, and they drive the recycling truck down the street, collecting all of this rubbish. They jump out of the truck and put the different types of rubbish in their own special place on board. Look, there's a place for everything. Cans and plastic go here, Glass goes in here. Food waste goes in here. With paper and cardboard at the back in these compartments. When the truck is full, it's time to head back to the depot to empty everything out. First, the truck drives onto some weighing scales. These are just like scales in your bathroom at home. But instead of weighing people, they weigh trucks. This tells the control centre 
just how much rubbish is on board the truck. Then, it's time for the zoomy little forklifts to do their whizzy work. They pull each container out from the sides of the truck and drive them to their own special place at the depot. Wow! Listen to that noisy glass! Huge bulldozers are used to push all the loose materials into a big pile. Then, to make everything smaller so that it can be easily transported for recycling, loose materials like plastic, cans and paper are squashed into bales. The final stage of recycling is called reprocessing. This is the bit where these bales are turned into something new that we can use again. The bales are taken on the back of big lorries to special factories for reprocessing. Glass can be melted down and made into new bottles. And the bales of cans can also be melted and turned into new cans ready to be filled with new drinks. When we recycle, it means we don't have to cut down new trees to make paper. We can keep reusing the paper we already have. Recycling is amazing but not as amazing as our beautiful planet that we all live on. That's why we have to work together to recycle and reuse our rubbish. Thanks to all the team at Kia for taking me out on their special recycling trucks today. If you love this video, there's plenty more over on our Toddler Fun Learning app. Just tap here to download it. See you again soon. Bye!